This video is brought to you by Captivating History. The Mongolian invasions of the early 13th century swept across the Central Asian steppes, creating an empire that eventually stretched from Hungary to Korea. For thousands of people, Genghis Khan and his Mongol horde were the boogeyman under the bed. Genghis Khan Origins the Mongol homelands were in the eastern portion of the Great Eurasian Steppe in Mongolia and northern China, in a small region of southern Russian Siberia. Long, extremely cold winters and short arid summers along with poor soil meant that farming was out of the question. The Mongols, like so many other tribes on the steppe, were pastoral nomads, with the horse as the very important center of their existence. The peoples of the steppe were varied and often warring with one another or engaged in uneasy peace. There were five powerful tribal confederations, the Kamag Mongols, their main rivals the Tartars, the Karedes, the Naaman, and the Merkits. In 1161, a long conflict between the Kamag and their neighboring Jin Empire in northeastern China had resulted in the Kamag being both leaderless and at loggerheads with the other confederacies. It was into this chaos that the future Genghis Khan was born in 1162. His life is detailed in The Secret History of the Mongols, one of the earliest examples of Mongolian literature. Temujin, as he was first known, was the great-grandson of the Kamag leader Kabul Khan. Some said that Temujin was born clutching a blood clot in his hand, an omen he would be a great warlord. When Temujin was nine, his father, a respected warrior, was poisoned by the Tartars in revenge for his killing their leader years before. Temujin's family was then left to fend for themselves after fellow clansmen rejected his leadership claims. During this time of adversity, Temujin committed his first murder, killing his older half-brother for both acting as the head of the family and taking more than his share of the precious food stores. In his mid-teens, Temujin sought out the friends and allies who would play an important role in the campaigns ahead. His marriage to Borte, a girl from his mother's tribe, was one such step, as it brought with it much-needed men. Another was cultivating the support of his father's Anda, or blood brother, Togra, the Karedi's leader. After the Merkit tribe attacked his camp, kidnapping his wife, Temujin turned to both Togra and a boyhood friend in Anda, Jamaka, for help. The latter, who was chief of the Jadaran tribe, had his own quarrels with the Merkits. After a successful and bloody raid, Borda was rescued. The child, who was born soon after her return, was named Joki, which means visitor. Although Temujin raised him as his own, the boy was not in the line of succession. He eventually had four wives and multiple children, both biological and adopted. Around 1182, there was a split between the two men due to their increasing rivalry. Temujin was growing in popularity. He promoted men based on merit rather than rank, unlike Jamaka, who held more traditional views. Many of Jamaka's followers and other tribes joined Temujin. He called for a tribal assembly known as a Kurultai in 1186 and was elected Khan of the Mongols. He also took the name Genghis. Mindful of not alienating his old ally, Togril, he told him that this was part of their plan to unite the Mongol people. Meanwhile, Jamaka had perceived Genghis' actions as a provocation and led 30,000 men in an attack against his rival's forces, killing many. His cruelty and victory, however, caused even more to join Genghis. Over time, though, the powerful alliance between Togril and Genghis concerned other tribes, who in turn strengthened their ties with Jamaka. In 1201, he called for a Kuril Tai and was declared Gur Khan, or Universal Ruler. It proved a risky tactic, however, and he fled after a devastating loss in battle with Genghis. In 1206, Jamaka was betrayed by some of his followers. As a matter of principle, Genghis had them executed for their treachery. Genghis asked to renew their friendship, but Jemaka refused, asking only for an honorable death. Meanwhile, the alliance with Togril had come apart under the malign influence of the latter's son, Sengum, who plotted to assassinate Genghis. After suffering a defeat at the hands of the Khan's forces, father and son went on the run, only to die in exile. 
By 1203, the Kuretis had become an integral part of the ever-expanding Mongol network. Genghis had come to an important realization after he and Togrel had joined forces with the Jin Empire to fight the Tartars. The emperor changed alliances at will, pitting the tribes against each other to suit his schemes. The reality of an unending cycle of waging war with rivals made Genghis change his way of thinking about his enemies. After his next victory, Genghis had the rival tribe leaders executed, but the ordinary people were assimilated and treated as equal members of the Kamak. Leading by example, he also married or made concubines of the women from conquered groups. With rival tribes now under Mongol rule, the great Mongol nation was officially declared in 1206. The scene was set for the next act. The Jin Empire and Central Asia By 1209, Siberia and both the Uyghurs and the wealthy Tangets of the western Zia state, which controlled part of the lucrative Silk Road trading route, had submitted to the Mongols. The way into the Jin Empire was opening. On the ride home from his campaign against the western Zia, the Mongols had met with a Jin envoy. As was the custom, he had asked for Genghis and his people to submit as the new emperor's vassals. The Khan's defiant refusal meant that war was declared. For years, defectors had provided valuable information about the Jin Empire's inner workings. In October 1211, the Mongols faced off against the Jin army at the Huan Erzwe Pass, Badger's Mouth. At this gateway to the capital of Zongdu, modern Beijing, the Jin were handily annihilated. The main Mongol army under Genghis continued to march southward, plundering along the way. Meanwhile, a smaller detachment led by his trusted general Jibi marched east towards Manchuria. His efforts there led to gaining yet more allies against the Jin. One of Genghis's key military skills was his ability to pick brilliant generals. Another of his assets were his soldiers. Fearless in battle, they moved at lightning speed on highly trained horses. They struck terror into the hearts of many. Some four years later, in 1215, the Mongols stood outside the 40-foot-high walls of Zongdu. Captured Chinese engineers had provided the know-how to design siege equipment. The siege lasted months before Zongdu fell. The ensuing pillaging and bloodshed only enhanced Genghis's fearsome reputation. The Jin Emperor, Zhuangzong, moved the capital south to Kaifeng and abandoned the northern half of his empire to the Mongols. Within 20 years, the dynasty itself had collapsed under the strain of ongoing warfare with Genghis's successor, Ogedai. In 1219, the Khwarazmian Empire came into the Khan's sights. Shah Allah ad din Muhammad II ruled over a region that covered most of modern Iran, Turzmekistan and Uzbekistan, and large parts of Afghanistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and southern Kazakhstan. Genghis sought peace with this Central Asian power, but the cold-blooded murder of Mongol envoys had to be avenged. He set out with a contingent of 200,000 men. The scale of the Mongol violence and destruction which ensued was unprecedented and helped to utterly destroy the Khwarazmian Empire. Genghis's lance now sprawled from the Yellow Sea in the east to the Caspian Sea in the west. After Genghis Genghis died in 1227 at 65 while on campaign against the Western Zia state. His burial place has remained unknown as all of those involved in the funeral were executed to keep his final resting place secret. Having laid the foundations for the largest empire in history, his descendants extended the Mongol domains across most of Eurasia by conquering or creating vassal states in all of modern-day China, Korea, the Caucasus, Central Asia, and substantial portions of Eastern Europe and Southwest Asia. His grandsons would split his empire into Khanates. In 1260, Kublai took the throne after his elder brother died. However, this led to war with another brother for the title of Khan. Kublai's victory caused further division in the Mongol Empire as one group refused to recognize him as their ruler, and others felt he had abandoned his Mongolian traditions. Kublai Khan founded the Yuan Dynasty, which ruled China into the 14th century. The Mongol Legacy Founding the Mongol Empire was not Genghis's only accomplishment. 
he oversaw the adaptation of Uyghur script as the Mongol's writing system. The Uyghurs also became an essential part of the bureaucracy since the Mongols themselves were mostly illiterate. He also encouraged religious tolerance across the Mongol Empire and was curious about other belief systems. Present-day Mongolians regard him as the country's founding father. He is also credited with bringing the Silk Road under one cohesive political rule. This, more than anything, made communication and trade even easier between Northeast Asia, Muslim Southwest Asia, and Christian Europe, while expanding the cultural horizons of all three. His influence continues to be felt to this day. To discover more about the Mongolian Empire, then check out our book, The Mongol Conquests, a captivating guide to the invasions and conquests initiated by Genghis Khan that created the vast Mongol Empire. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.